Good morning. It is five minutes, ten minutes to four a.m. I woke up an hour ago so that I can get ready for my trip. We're going to Tanzanzibar. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the beginning of the travel vlog. Good morning! We are going to Dar es Salaam as I said. So I started off my journey getting the bus in Nairobi town, Nairobi CBD at the Tamid offices there. That's how much I paid for my ticket. And yes, I watched the sunrise in the bus because wow, going to Dar es Salaam takes 14 hours and I'm just going to show you three minutes of my 14 hour trip. So we arrived at the Namanga border about two and a half hours into the journey and at the border what they require you to have is your passport your yellow fever certificate and your covid certificate so this is all that they ask of you when you're entering tanzania and then i got this zawadi or a gift from one of the maasai ladies who was selling curios and yeah now we're officially in tanzania and this is like hour three of the journey i am already exhausted because i barely slept the night before because I was so nervous about missing my bus. I almost said missing my flight. And yes, I do carry my travel pillow on a bus. Anyway, we arrived in Arusha shortly after. So this is probably like hour four or five of the journey. Passed through Arusha and we collected a few other customers or people who are you taking the bus. And I found it actually very wild that even the people we pick up on the stops who are already in Tanzania pay the same fee that I do from Nairobi. After Arusha, we drove a few more hours, I think not even that long, about half an hour to an hour, and we arrived in Moshi, which is the town where Kilimanjaro is, but it was quite late in the day, so couldn't see the tip of the mountain even, or the snowy peak, and yeah, we picked up a few more passengers in Moshi, and we continued on our way. We actually passed some sisal farms, so sisal is that fiber that they use to like weave baskets and I don't know what else and they entertained us on the bus guys great bus services they actually played like three movies and also played like a mix of like uh, African music playlist vibes afro beats I'm a piano all the works and yeah and then this is the boring view that I had because on the other side of the bus that's where people saw all the mountainous landscapes that are in this part of Tanzania and I didn't see it and I think that is more sisal and we actually stopped to let some politicians through but we also had like six police stops along the way um, during our journey and finally we had a rest stop and this was around 3 p.m. so I'd been on the road for 10 hours still have like another four hours to go to get to Dar es Salaam and you can even see the change in the landscape now there are palm trees we're approaching the coast that actually excites me guys I love the water and then the final town we passed through was Korogwe where we picked up and dropped off a few people and this is the sun setting and then I arrive in Dar. Two thousand years later. I finally arrived after like 14-15 hours on the road. My friend Rose picked me up from the bus stop. She's Tanzanian and yeah she fed me with some fried locusts as we awaited dinner and our dinner was Gypsy Mayai which is like a french fry omelette and was served with kebabs. No, this is beef mm -hmm. and this is chicken. chicken oh, just chicken, chicken. chicken, chicken. I said chicken, chicken to ask if it's boiler chicken because I don't like eating Kenya chicken. Mm. Here, a wonderful night's rest. We woke up okay. right and early on the next day and we are ready to go to Zanzibar. So we took a bayaji, bayaji, yes, or a tuk tuk as we call it in Kenya and we made our way through the town of dar so fun fact about me and rose we met in johannesburg when we were studying and we haven't seen each other for three years so this is our first time and yeah this is the streets of dar es salaam that was a, a public transport that we passed and one interesting thing i felt about being in tanzania is that it felt like such a mix of east africa meets southern africa because the southern african tendencies i saw were they actually obey traffic lights and the east african vibes i saw were like the mix of vehicles you know their boda bodas the motorbikes and the tuk-tuks 
Before we headed to the ferry to buy our tickets, we passed by TBC, Tanzania Mercasting Channel, where Rose works as a journalist. So I watched a segment get filmed shortly, and after that she showed me the newsroom where they stand with their outfits and report breaking news and do their news segments. And this was just a fun field trip so I can see where my friend works after she finished her journalism degree at Wits University with honors. And then we drove through the University of Dar es Salaam, which is actually a university in Swahili is Chuo or Chuoni. And this is one of the campuses um, of the University of Dar es Salaam. And one thing about people in Tanzania, guys, they will speak Swahili. Like, if even if the numbers, for me, that's the biggest thing that shocked me. I thought I didn't have to know numbers in Swahili until I went to Dar and I didn't even know what um, three, no, I knew what three was. I didn't even know what five was. And people would tell me prices of things in Swahili and I wouldn't know. But anyway, enjoy this montage of us heading towards the ferry and enjoy the streets of Dar es Salaam. I got excited seeing this bridge because I'm a civil engineer, so like I'm a geek for infrastructure. Guys, we made it to the ferry, although we had to take the two o'clock one. So this is us waiting to get our ferry. Those just if there are some ferries that docked in that arrived from Zanzibar Island. And yeah, this is us boarding the Zan Fast Ferries. It cost Rose 30,000 Tanzanian shillings for her ticket. And it cost me um, $30. Yes, because for it is a charged more. Because that's what we do in East Africa. You gotta profit off the tourists. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, this is us on the boat. And that's, that's another ferry called Kilimanjaro. And of course we stood outside because I wanted to make sure that I get the full experience of taking the ferry to Zanzibar. Um, I'm out here looking cute, ne? but the reality is that the wind is beating me and the salt from the ocean is dropping my face. We arrived in Zanzibar about 90 minutes after leaving Dar and I can't wait to see you in the next vlog, which is Zanzibar day one. Thank you for watching. See you in my next video.